Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Lord of the Rings, the Third Age walkthrough. Uh, we've just got to head on back and wow, okay, so I guess I missed uh, a triggered battle here, which is very strange because I actually came from the opposite direction the first time, right, so I guess I must have just, uh, I guess walked close enough to the, the Warg Caves to avoid this fight. Anyways, I don't think that we get anything uh, reward-wise, uh, or sorry, equipment-wise for this fight, but uh, anyways, uh, and I believe I took a quick cut to after, mm, I don't know, it's somewhere on this trip, so, uh, and I don't really know why, I just uh, I cut out some footage of me walking all the way back to the the start of the zone. And again, I'm not really sure why. I, I, maybe I just uh, turned off the capture software for a little bit. I'm not really sure. Anyways, um, you didn't you didn't miss anything. Maybe maybe a random encounter or two. I'm not sure, but uh, nothing nothing to write home about. Uh, so these guys here. What were these guys? The wild man. Uh, wild man something. The guys with the white clothes on, uh, right? Well, white hair. Sorry. Those guys have the Morgul decay. I don't know if that's always. Yeah. Okay. It looks like that's always the case. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Morgul decay completely removes the armor of a target, which, in some fights, is pretty crazy. Uh, I would, I would definitely hang on to those. I'll try to point out any, any good, good areas to use that that item, but uh, the cool thing about this area is, um, and especially the, the area actually coming up, uh, we'll run into tons of these guys, so if you ever if you ever get low on those or something and you want to stock up, you can always kind of cruise around, do the random battles, and uh, get into fights with these dudes and steal them, so uh, yeah, I guess just keep in mind that you can, you can always get more. Anyhow, what do we got going here? All right, so everybody's asleep. I don't know this. Uh, I don't think this is the battle I farm in. Um, at some point here, I did take a little time with Morwen to just try to learn a bunch of her skills. And uh, actually, there's a couple of videos ago there I mentioned something about her cloak of the plains. It's her final skill in her thiefcraft tree. And it's pretty, it is honestly pretty crazy. So, um, Morwen's huge drawback, uh, is, is her, uh, you know, her constitution and her armor. So when she does take hits, she takes, uh, a ton of damage. Now there's a couple of ways around that. Uh, Hadhod shield is huge. And in all honesty, I would say that that's probably your best answer to that, uh, issue. However... Her Cloak of the Plains is also pretty insane. So what that does is for a few turns, I think it's something like three turns, I'll say, uh, she cannot be targeted by the enemy at all. Um, so literally, the only thing I'm not 100% sure on is if, uh, and maybe I'll have to just test this out, but sometimes, you know, your enemies will have multi-target attacks. Um, but... You know, I'll, I'll have to, I'll, I'll give that a shot and see uh, if those attacks will still target her or not. Um, but anyways, she is not a valid target in most cases from enemies. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, number one, Cloak of the Plains is 250 AP. And there's your cut, or that's the cut I was talking about. So, I kind of just skipped over a, a short little area there. Not really sure why. Again, I think I, I don't know if I clicked off my capture software for a little bit there, but, uh, anyways, um, Cloak of the Plains, again, extremely expensive, and, uh, at this point in the game, Morwen's AP total is not fantastic, um, you know, luckily not, all of her skills are crazy expensive, but, 250 is an insane amount of AP for a skill, so, Again, it's really cool, um, but, you know, you're going to have to cast it, like, every three turns. And unless you've got Barathor with uh, Company Might, as well as, like, a Fellowship Grace running, like, at all times, it's just 
probably not gonna be worth the cost. Uh, you know, to cover to cover that we that little weak no not little it's a pretty significant weakness, but anyways um you know again I wouldn't say that that's something that you're going to be using a whole lot uh, I I know I haven't again it's and it's because of the cost, you know if it was something like maybe 50 AP <laughs> heck yeah I'd be spamming the crap out of that ability. Aomir's force rides east, make for Helm's Deep. Um, alright, nice. Level up there. Uh, so anyways, uh, again, back to the whole, uh, Morwin issue. Um, you know, so extremely low defense, low con, uh, constitution. Uh, but that being said, in my opinion, the best way to kind of make up for that isn't necessarily to put points into constitution. I don't like, I don't like that, that going down that route. I, I just... I honestly don't feel like it's worth it. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, I, I, you know, again, Hadhod Shield is pretty nice. And here we've got a little scene with, I think this is Amir. Thanks to you, we warned all the riders we could. Our force must now gather for war. A great battle comes, and we shall sweep the Uruks from our land. <coughs> Regroup your force. Then drive on towards the Snowborn Bridge. Good luck. All right. Uh, so again, uh, that's my opinion on uh, how to best <laughs> uh, shore up Morrowind's weakness, I suppose. Uh, so take that information and use it as you please. Uh, anyways. Continuing on, so all right, we gotta make our we gotta make our way back to the bridge, and uh, again, again, nothing really fancy here. I guess if you feel like you've missed something in the warg caves, you could head back that way. Otherwise, I would say just come around this way. I I don't know, it, you know, after you've kind of explored the caves and get a good feel for them, it's uh, pretty easy to to make your way through there. But for whatever reason, I always take this way anyway. I'm not really sure why. I guess it's more scenic. I don't know. <laughs> Got a nice lake here, right? Yeah. Some some random encounter. Some lovely random encounter. Uh, so yeah. All right. Anyways, I think I'm more fun stuff to talk about with Morwen. Uh. Yeah, okay, so um, I did a, actually just a little bit of testing uh, with her bleeds, or her damage over time, or whatever you want to call it. Anyways, her uh, it seems to me that her, is it her twin, twin strike? Um, gosh, no, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to have to give it a rip here. Let's see exactly what it's called. I like to try to, you know, be specific in the skill names. I can't always remember them all that well, so sometimes it's, uh, sometimes I just have to go into the game and uh, double cleave, or I don't think that's it. I think it's like twin wounds. Craft twin wounds. Yes, that is the name. So twin wounds. Um, it seems to me that the damage over time effect is uh, doubly or twice as effective as poison wounds. And then um, paralyzing wound has a damage over time component to it as well. The only problem with paralyzing wound is I believe if uh, if your target is immune, I don't know that it. Uh, I don't know that the damage over time sticks. I guess I'll have to try that out as well. But uh, the other cool thing that I learned about all of the uh, of her bleeds is they do uh, get benefit from spirit attacks or from spirit stat. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, and then along with that, you know, the elf stones that uh, boost your spirit power 
uh, help the damage over time uh, effects as well. So it seems to me in this game, uh, and I, I can't think of an exception to the rule right off the top of my head, but it seems to me that all of the damage over time effects in this game are boosted by your spirit power. And on top of that, then, um, you know, by those elf stones that boost, uh, you know, what I think they're like the, the craft elf stone of spirit enhancement. Or something like that. Um, and then on top of all that, you can actually stack those elf stones as long as they're different names. So you can have a cracked, a polished, and eventually an ancient uh, elf stone of spirit enhancement. So, again, you can stack all three. Unfortunately, <laughs> the damage is additive and not multiplicative. So, um... Which would be absolutely insane. That would be, it would be way too good. <laughs> if it was multiplicative, that is. Um, so basically, you know, um, we'll just say, I, I believe the way that um, the Cracked Elf Stone works is any amount of spirit damage you would deal is doubled. So we'll just say in uh, Morwen's case here, with her bleed, or we'll say, um, we'll say twin, twin, uh, twin. Wind. Uh, if that bleed or damage over time uh, component to it, that is not the initial damage, uh, if that damage over time was going to do 500 damage and you have a Cracked Elf Stone of Spirit Enhancement equipped, you will then do 1,000 damage on that damage over time effect. Uh, the Polished Elf Stone, I believe, and I haven't tested this because uh, I don't actually have the item uh, in my current like testing um, setup I suppose um, but I suspect that it'll be five times damage I'm not 100% sure though and I will obviously have to verify that uh, but then the ancient elf stone I actually do have one of those so that adds or sorry it does ten times the amount of damage that you would normally do so um, you know again with uh, with an attack that would do 500 damage that elf stone uh, or that ancient elf stone would then do 5,000 damage instead of the 1,000 and then if you have we'll just say both of them equipped you will do 5,500 damage instead uh, because again it's it's additive their the, their effects are additive and not unfortunately multiplicative anyways holy crap that was a pretty long explanation of game mechanics halfway through the uh, game, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're on the bridge here, and we this is kind of one of those um, uh, wave-type battles, I suppose. Now, there obviously, there's a limit. It's not like you have to have everything dead all at the same time in order to win this battle, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of enemies that'll come, and... Uh, I guess, you know, a decent strategy with these is always if you can, you know, sleep some of them and then focus on one, you know, and then just, uh, you know, that way as the uh, reinforcements come in, you're not getting, you know, tons of, you're not getting attacked by a ton of different ones at once. Now, with the, uh, the, oh, the, the shadow craft here, I'm just blowing everything to smithereens, so I don't really, didn't really care. Uh, I am going to bring in Elagost, obviously, here to to absorb or get some EXP. Uh, but for the most part, you know, not something that you're really going to have to worry about that much. <laughs> I guess if you, you know, have uh, invested in the, the uh, shadow craft like I have. Which, again, you know, I don't know. To me, is a ton of fun. It's a it's a pretty significant time investment if you want to do it on you know multiple characters. Oh, I don't know. I guess of uh, of the you know the, a lot of the skill trees. I mean, in all honesty, that Shadowcraft tree levels extremely fast. Uh, I think you know in in a battle you could you could probably learn all of the Shadowcraft tr tree skills in anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, depending, I guess, on if you've got Alagost, his, uh, um, oh my gosh, his sleep, uh, lingering sleep, uh, passive, because that's, that really just makes everything better. Yeah, you can, 
you know, once you get to crippling, uh, you can keep, you know, one enemy completely locked down, but, uh, you know, getting there can be kind of an issue because, well, <laughs> it can be kind of problematic. Uh, anyways, looks like we took everything down there, not too bad. Um, you know, I don't know, if you've got, or if you feel like you need to, you can run back and, uh, use the save point, you know, to restore your health and AP. I think, I don't know if I, I don't know if I do that or not, or if I just, uh, just keep on keeping on. I feel like I missed something for her. I thought she got her... Maybe not, but I thought she got the bottom part of that armor set earlier. Maybe that's what I missed in the East Eminent Gullies. I'm not sure. I should probably check on that, actually. My family would have fled this way. They did not strike for Edoras. They must risk more dangerous White Mountain Paths. How can we find them in the midst of this? I suggest you locate one of their maps. Since you now prize the cause of these people over the elves. Because of one pretty face. <laughs> and that is why I love those two. Those two and uh, their... <laughs> The <laughs> Hadhod and uh, Elagos relationship is the best relationship in this entire game. There, I said it. <laughs> because it's hilarious. Anyways, uh, I was right. Um, I, part of the, or one of the pieces of armor that I missed in the uh, East Eminent Gullies was a fald for, I believe that's the name of it, uh, for Idriel. It was like the uh, Second Age Elven Steel Fald or something like that. Uh, so anyways, that's why she looks a little off um, to me. Uh, and then the, the second item was uh, a, a sword for Barathor. Anyways, not that important. Uh, same strategy here, I guess, you know, as, uh, as the earlier fight here. You're going to have the enemies that are, uh, you know, oddly climbing up the side of what appears to be a bridge. Which, I don't know. It seems like, you know, more appropriate that trolls would be under there, but I don't know. Anyways, right? Trolls, bridges, they seem to go together. Anyway. Uh, as far as these guys, yeah, nothing new here. Uh, same old caster that, you know, we've always, or we've seen in the area, as well as these dual-wielding creepy orcs. I don't know. <laughs> The the uh, the attack that they do though I don't know if it's the is it the dual blades or or the pincer whatever I don't know I think it looks really cool though how the blades glow red so I don't know, really cool animation anyway same deal you know if you want uh, put put stuff to sleep with Elagost and then you know take take the enemies out one at a time I always recommend that strategy especially if you're not uh, you know, able to put out mass amounts of multi-target damage, I guess. Alright. Little Fellowship Grace here. Get that AP rolling back in. I think I wanted to try to avoid uh, using... I well, I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I've got 200-some old Toby, but... Didn't want to have to. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm use. I use royal. I don't know if I used fellowship grace or not. So I don't. You know, obviously royal grace isn't going to do anything for my AP. Although it is a. Gosh, that was a really nice heal over time. Um. <clears throat> so another thing here is that uh, a lot of these enemies are uh, vulnerable to fear, which is huge. You know, once again, I've. I guess I've actually mentioned that a couple of times, but. Uh, not only will the enemies not, you know, be able to counterattack, but they, I don't think you can even possibly miss. Again, I haven't, 
I guess I haven't run into any uh, misses on enemies that were feared. So, again, I don't think you can. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just that lucky. Maybe it's that big of a coincidence. I mean, I really doubt it, but... Saying it's a possibility. So, so you're saying there's a chance. All right. Anyways, <clears throat> got a new kind of new bow here for Elagast. Uh, in all honesty, you know, especially with Elagost, I would say, you, for the most part, you're not going to have to think about, uh, you know, what weapon he equips. You're just always going to want to do more damage. And uh, his, the stats, you know, they're so minor anyway that it, it doesn't, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, so this fight, I believe, is one of the fights that you'll have to do for uh, evil mode but uh, the obviously the archers in the back oh my god what a joke all right so there's the archers in the back they can't be targeted by melee obviously uh, so nothing nothing new as far as strategy goes there uh, the two up front they just do bleeds uh, a couple of pieces of gear for Barathor very nice Excuse me. All right, what do we have here? A new chest plate. Ooh, very nice. That's a pretty decent armor upgrade. Twenty. <laughs> I don't know why they made it look so similar. Anyways, who cares? Uh, and then this ring's got quite a bit of dex. So, uh, although I'd, I'm betting I'm not gonna equip that. Yeah. So this has got my old ring's got four dex, six speed, which I kind of like. This has got eight dex. Yeah, I don't know. I can't imagine I equipped this, but I guess we'll find out here. Uh, again, you know, the dex is nice, but I like the, I don't know, I guess I like the speed more on the other one as well. Well, speed and dex. Uh, waters of Gladden, and I believe in this chest should be a uh, yep, weapon for Idriel. All right. Uh, and this thing, I don't know, looks kind of cool. I don't know that... She gets much use out of this, but I suspect, oh yeah. Oh, did I not even equip it? Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Okay, yeah, all right, we'll equip it. Uh, again, you know, I, I barely do any sword abilities with Idril, so her weapon really doesn't matter that much. Um... The, you know, but on the flip side of that coin, the stats also don't make that much of a difference either. So it kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't really matter, I guess. Anyways, let's continue on let's to Snowborn. Snowborn. It defends the approach to Edoras. I expect Grima to have betrayed it by now. I must gather more men. Mithrandia will soon summon us to battle. Farewell, Gondorian. <laughs> All right, um, so Snowborn is a fairly decent sized area, and I don't know how much, yeah, we'll get into it a little bit, I guess. This was the doing of a man they called Grimma. I know this creature. Word of him spread to Gondor. I thought you were of Rohan. Only now. My family once served the steward. But his mind was poisoned against my father. I suspect Grima. We must crush this worm now, or he shall intercept the refugee column and slaughter it. Where did that, where did that Rohan guy come from? Anyways, who cares? Who cares? Who even cares? Uh, what is it? There's a little story there about... Um, Morwen originally being from Gondor, I believe. Which, I don't know. Again, I feel like the story is pretty terrible in this, so I kind of didn't care. <laughs> I play it for the combat system, so. 
Do I want to save my game? Of course I do. Doi and or hello. Uh, the play time is not accurate. It kind of is. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not. There's a couple of times where I left the, the game idle for way too long. So my time is way off, but... But, I also did do a ton of leveling, so it's not also entirely off. You know, any normal playthrough would probably be at, well, I guess, I guess it's hard to, hard to estimate, 10 hours or so, maybe? I don't know, somewhere around there? And I'd be at least double that, at least. <clears throat> Just because, again, I did so much leveling. And skilling, I should say. Maybe, maybe that's more accurate. Yeah, I guess I was more, you know, I was concentrating more on uh, getting my skills up and not necessarily leveling. It just kind of, you get both, I guess. <laughs> Let's get this guy down. There we go. Alright, that's the end of that guy. We got places to go. Probably pe people to see. Oh, I don't know. That's the saying, right? Third Age, Rohirrim, Brooch of Haven. Hmm. wonder if this is any good. Nope. Not looking like it. Uh, I guess if you are low on spirit or something, maybe that's good. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, um... I think actually we wanted to go up that hill first. Yeah, my bad. All right, so the way that this this place works is there's a ton of locked gates. And uh, so what you'll end up doing here is going up these hills and then there will be kind of like switches, I guess. And uh, the switches will open up the gates. I know, it's super, super complex, right? Uh, but anyways, all right, so here's uh, one of the wild men that have the Morgul Decay. I don't believe I bother stealing, but uh, I guess just know that they are lurking throughout the area. So, you know, if you want some more of those, uh, I guess here is a good, good chance to get them. I'm not really sure how many I guess I'd recommend, you know, trying to find. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> what was that? Two people got to take turns there? Very nice. Alright, fixed encounter. What do we have here? <clears throat> A bunch of dudes with death wishes. Something I don't know. It sounded cooler in my head. <laughs> I don't even know why I bothered putting that guy to sleep. Kind of pointless. Which just mean that he gotta he gotta turn right away. Water call, very nice. All right, let's see what these guys got. Works, okay. Go ahead and miss. I don't care. Murder of crows. Okay. I bet that's, yeah, that's not too bad. So th this, uh, this banner carrying dude, the, the guy that just died, <laughs> um, you know, he's not your typical, like, full, full-on mage, so he's just not gonna do as much damage with, uh, Murder of Crows as, you know, like a full mage would. Alright. Boom! Uh, nighty night. So that's that. Uh, still cool though that they get uh, Warcry. It, uh, you know, I don't know if their idea was t 
to kind of show you what what that kind of skill could do you know I'm not really sure but uh, either way it's a cool skill sometimes I feel like maybe they dropped some hints like hey you should try to get this but I'm not really sure because Warcry is pretty awesome I still have to do a little more testing to the to really see what uh, all the different skills are but so far it uh, it's uh, an insanely useful ability. I kind of wish like you could uh, <laughs> you know almost like make defaults but you know again I think that'd almost be a little too OP though too. Like you know every time you use Warcry with Barathor you could set Idril to always use Wheel of Fire you know something like that but again that would be really OP. Uh, one of the kind of cool things though about it is uh, later on, I know Hadhod tends to use uh, Durin, Durin, I think it's Durin Wrath, which I don't know if they meant to put Durin's Wrath. It seems like it makes more sense to be Durin's, but anyways, when he uses the ability Durin, Durin Wrath, um, you know, when it's his turn, it has a really long cooldown time, so, you know, you'll be sitting around waiting for him to take a turn. Whereas if you use Warcry, you know, there there's no... Uh, I guess uh, cooldown associated with that, so you know, it's kind of cool. It's the same actually with Loudwater Fury. Lo you know, Loudwater Fury's got a really, really long uh, cooldown time or reuse time, however you want to say it. But uh, when Barthor uses his War War Call or War Cry, depending on you know what uh, what skill you're using, uh, she'll use that, and you know, again, you won't get the uh, the insanely long cooldown time. All right, so I think here on this hill, the, uh, basically the red dots are where your uh, where your switches are at. So you just walk up to them, you know, hit the X button or whatever button have, you happen to be playing on. I don't know if you guys are playing on uh, PlayStation 2 or Xbox or blah, 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 whatever, GameCube. Uh, but anyways, go up to the, the red dots, open up the gates, and then... Um, you know, I don't know. I feel like I feel like starting on this side is the best way to go about it. I, I don't know that it really matters in the long run, but... We'll end up, you know, fully exploring this area anyway. But uh, I guess this is just how I do it. Uh, but anyways, all right, so now you can see this gate is open and uh, you can sneak on through. And uh, I believe, yep, all right, so that's, this is where the next gate is at and... Uh, so we'll just need to run run past it and go up this hill here. There's nothing back here behind this farm cart, but I was trying to be thorough and explore. So yeah, so there's that. Alright, looking like this is going to be the last fight that we have to deal with before the end of this video. Yeah, it looks like a, <laughs> a couple of Wheel of Fires will take these guys down pretty quick. That's that. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I am going to cut the commentary here. So uh, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Um, and if you do, you know, leave a comment, uh, like it, do whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> but uh, again, hope you're liking them and I uh, hope you join me for more. All right. Thanks for watching.